T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, command engine start, 2, 1. This is a Space Brief. The Terran Space Academy brings you an update on the recent Blue Origin New Shepard launch abort. It was the turbo pump. It's always the turbo pump. This is being reported in the news as a failure. And of course the booster engine did fail. The New Shepard is a very small hydrogen-fueled single-stage suborbital rocket used for tourist flights or very short-duration microgravity experiments. It is composed of a single booster with a capsule. The booster has one BE-3 liquid hydrogen and oxygen engine. The BE-3 is a combustion tap-off powered pump-fed rocket engine. This is where a small pipe feeds hot gas from the combustion chamber to the inlet of the turbine, making it spin. The turbine is attached to impeller pumps by a common shaft, and these pumps move fuel and oxidizer from the tanks into the combustion chamber where it is ignited and burned. The engine produces 490 kilonewtons of thrust at sea level. On 12 September 2022, New Shepard Rocket 3, with a capsule named the RSS HG Wells, was launched in perfect weather on the 9th New Shepard flight. This booster was the third one built and was completed in 2017. Booster NS3 was planned to only fly cargo and was first flown in December 2017 on a qualification flight. It was upgraded several times since then, with a second flight in April of 2018. Another was planned for December of 2018, but was delayed due to ground support problems. I feel your pain, says the SLS. The third flight was in January of 2019, and the capsule flew, after separation, to an altitude of 106.9 kilometers. This booster was being used to test NASA lunar landing technology called SPLICE. SPLICE stands for Safe and Precise Landing Integrated Capabilities Evolution. This would have been the fourth flight for the booster. The rocket was carrying 36 experiments and launched perfectly, flying for just a little more than one minute before visible problems developed with the engine. I was serious about the turbo pump. The only rapidly moving parts of a rocket engine are the turbo pump components. These spin at tens of thousands of RPM, and the blades are prone to fracturing and failure. When this happens, pieces of metal are thrown out with tremendous force. This shrapnel punches through almost anything in its path, electronics, equipment, propellant tanks, and lines. This caused an immediate loss of thrust, which was detected by the onboard computers, and the launch abort motor was automatically fired. This is a solid rocket motor built by Rocketdyne. Solid rocket motors have a low specific impulse, but very high thrust, and they are very simple. Light them and they go. The capsule streaked away, producing very high G-forces, probably around 8 to 10 Gs, which, as Maverick would tell you, is uncomfortable. The solid rocket motor does not gimbal, and the capsule is stabilized in flight by aerodynamic forces. In this case, we see it sway back and forth. This would have allowed anyone on board to see this side of the Earth, and then that side, and then back to the other side. This would be a very exciting event for thrill-seekers but would probably have injured an elderly tourist, if one had been on board. You dodged a bullet this time, Jeff. The capsule did successfully fly to safety, and deployed its parachute to land, firing its retro rockets just before touchdown. In many ways, this is a successful real-world test of Blue Origin's launch escape technology. The expensive experiments landed safely back on Earth. You may notice that Elon did not go snub-orbital about the event. But this makes sense, as Elon Musk criticizing anyone for blowing something up would be deeply hypocritical. I personally would be more inclined to trust the new Shepard's escape system after this event. But maybe not the turbo pump. Gotta watch those turbo pumps. Have a great day and stay safe. At Astra Proterra.